search advertising and SEO is all about pulling them in, in that you're up the top of the ads or you're in the natural search results. They've had to search for that term and so they're going to be looking for a result that caters to them. So as long as your information that you're actually presenting in that is, is relevant to them, uh, then you have a bit more of a chance of actually getting them to come to your listing versus your competitors. This is Velocitize Talks and I'm Eric Jones. I'm here with Luke Chaffee, the technical lead with KBB Digital. Luke, it's good to have you. Nice to meet you. Luke, could you tell us a little bit about KB, KBB Digital? Yeah, absolutely. Um, yeah, so we're a digital marketing firm down in Geelong with a head office in Sydney. And what we do is for small to medium businesses, we go ahead and look at digital strategy at in-house sort of retainer style work, so SEO, digital advertising, and also web-based projects, so whether it's a web application or maybe a brochure style website, we can help small businesses in that sort of area. You're a uh, prolific writer, prolific speaker. Um, what are some of the things that you'd recommend, maybe three, three ideas that spring to mind on um, you know, digital marketing activities that you'd recommend to business owners? If you're at like sort of a starting end of the market, getting things like Google Analytics in place and not only just basic analytics, but getting some spam filtering out of the way and then looking at sort of goals and conversions on your websites, making sure that when someone fills in a form, you actually know that happened. And that allows you to then look at something like Google AdWords to run search advertising and display advertising and actually see based on what they're coming in through, what's actually going to convert and what what's going to drive your message home. Another sort of angle that a lot of small, medium businesses are getting into a lot more is Facebook advertising and not just like general boost the post and, and the likes, but getting really, really specific on targeting. So not just going 40 or 60 year old males, but looking at are they walking past your shop every day or are they driving past? Like there is a lot of targeting that you can go at a very specific angle in Facebook and, and at AdWords level as well. But Facebook is really nailing that down to a point and definitely another angle to look at. What do you, what do you think uh, Facebook's doing better than AdWords? I think what Facebook at the moment is doing better in, in, in than in uh, AdWords is they have more data allowing you to target advertising at a more very specific level. Um, AdWords is pretty good at the moment um, in that they generally know what you're doing on the web and can, can make distinctions based on that, but Facebook has all that data about you already. It knows what you're doing. It, it specifically knows what you're doing because you're interac interacting with the platform itself. So being able to target based on those interactions is a bit scary to some people, but um, it's great for marketing. A lot of people have commented on you know, content and everybody's a media company today, but the flip side is we're all deluged with content. Yeah. Increasingly, I would say, you know, the public is more skeptical about the content yeah. and the trustworthiness of, of that content. How do you ensure that, you know, the content, you know, you're producing for your clients resonates and is providing some value? I look at it from firstly an SEO perspective. So this is someone who's had to specifically search for what I'm writing about. Um, writing content about questions that someone is asking and then answering that question really helps to prove that you're actually providing the message that they're looking for. With, I guess, the amplification of voice search at the moment, like 20% of searches done via mobile are voice and a lot more are now those really long sentence style searches. So rather than just searching for like something pizza shop or something like that, People are now searching for like, where's the closest pizza shop near me? And because Google has all the data about the pizza shops in their local area and their location data, they're able to provide that very specific answer. And so what we're finding is writing content that, yeah, asks that question, answers it, helps provide a relatively pretty relevant content back to that question. A lot of brands have made you know significant investments in their content. Um, what are some ways that you'd advise those brands to protect their content? Ooh, protection of content is, is a difficult one because there's a few different angles to that. Some is that literally copy and pasting it and, and something like a brand mentions or a copyscape sort of services are, are great to pick up duplicate content online. But to find that your, your content's being used by another brand is very difficult to try and stop if you actually want to stop it. So 
a lot of people now see that as, I guess, almost as a brand advocate when they're taking your content and, and utilizing it. If they're utilizing it in a bad way, though, that's when really it's, it's a very difficult and gray area at the moment. It's trying to almost directly contact and, and trying to get them to either remove it or try and negotiate some sort of circumstance with them. You've written a lot about, you know, search and, and SEO. Uh, how do you think the, wh what is the place of, of search and SEO, um, you know, as voice, predictive analytics, um, and various other push technologies begin to come to the fore? Someone has had to have literally searched for what you're offering in order to come up. Whereas something where you're pushing your message out, so whether you're pushing a message through display advertising or social advertising, that's where you're really pushing a message onto the person and hoping that they're looking for you at that time. Whereas really search advertising and SEO is all about pulling them in, in that you're up the top of the ads or you're in the natural search results. They've had to search for that term and so they're gonna be looking for a result that caters to them. So as long as your information that you're actually presenting in that is, is relevant to them, uh, then you have a bit more of a chance of actually getting them to come to your listing versus your competitors. You've talked about uh, progressive web apps yeah. uh, being the, uh, you know, the secret future of the web. Yeah. <clears throat> Tell us a little bit more about what you meant by that. Progressive web apps, uh, for those who don't know, is firstly a, a web application in a way. It's a website that it effectively saves and, and stores information offline so that you can come back to it later and view that sort of information. That's at a real general sense. There's a lot of different ways that can go down, but what we're seeing is rather than someone going for a mobile application or building a website that's specifically just for desktop or maybe has a nicer version on mobile, we're seeing that this merge between mobile application and website is coming in and actually making this thing called a progressive web app. And what it you know, effectively allows is someone to be browsing the sites, going really quickly, operating really fast, and allowing them to store it to their home page on their mobile phone if they want to come back over and over again without the ginormous cost of a mobile application. Do you think it ultimately may result in the death of apps and the app store? I think it's gonna be a difficult one because Apple itself probably won't want to shut down the app store because they will still wanna make money off people purchasing apps. What, they've, what I've seen is the Microsoft store um, like on your tablet and the likes are actually now pulling in progressive web apps into them into their actual store and it's just presented as another application and so I think ultimately if you can have a progressive web app that's seen as an application in the app store there's not really that reason to have a mobile specific application especially with technology it's it's ever so changing quickly that the app I guess specific app, um, functionality that's eventually going to come to progressive web apps. Like it, it's just a matter of time. How have you seen tools like AI uh, sort of change the game on, on SEO and various other digital marketing tactics? Mm. So the artificial intelligence, yeah, it's definitely changing the game a bit. And if we look at something like Google AdWords, in, in the past you were targeting based on, or sorry, paying per click and or paying per impression you know, in uh, digital advertising, uh, display advertising. But what we're, I guess we're seeing these days is not only is Google allowing you to bid based on when they think someone's gonna be more likely to convert or when they think that someone's gonna be able to purchase with you, they're also showing that you can rotate like your actual adverts, your text adverts that are in AdWords. It, it can rotate them through based on it thinks this is gonna be more converting than this other text ad that you have. And so what it's effectively allowing you to do is I guess, stop having to analyze the data, put your trust in Google, and they'll try and serve the best approach for your advertising. You are having to trust Google in that, and that's a very tricky one for a lot of people. And I've been, I guess myself, I've been playing around a bit with both uh, sort of angles, and so far it's been pretty good. Um, and I think just as time comes, it learns more data and understands the situation a bit more and is able to make better decisions. But um, yeah, it's still pretty early stages within digital advertising itself. So, um, you know, I think that that gives rise to another question, which is how do you balance the science and the art of digital marketing? 
Yes, the science and the art is, it's definitely a huge different, like you've got your A-B split testing where you can have the visual side and, and actually looking at what specific things do we think are going to make a better conversion rate here versus then actually seeing what happens. And whenever we're running A-B split testing at the moment, it, it's definitely, I, I imagine a lot of people do a similar sort of approach where you're coming up with a hypothesis of what actually are we going to change, what do we expect it to make and what sort of level of impact does it have to make to be a permanent change on our sites. And um, it's a very, I guess, fun in one sense and, and also very strategic in the other side. And I love playing around with what we could change on the site next versus what we will actually end up implementing. But um, it's, yeah, definitely a fun area. What is the deviation, uh, I'm just sort of curious, for you to actually warrant making the change? Well, it, it, I mean, it definitely comes down to what, like some, some of them are huge changes. And so it's a bit of a fun exercise in those ones because it is just a, what happens if we just completely change something in one day? And, um, but when it's a bit more of a minuscule sort of um, one, usually like if it's a one, 2% increase in conversions, then that's something that we're going to want to keep on moving in the website. You know, obviously there are all these amazing technologies, um, you know, from voice to VR to AR and so on all these ambient technologies mm. that are coming around. Um, what are you most excited about in terms of, you know, what it could potentially do for, for digital marketing? For me, I, I'm mostly excited around things like the, the Google Home and Amazon Alexa because they're pretty new in Australia um, these days. But what I'm personally most excited in is the idea of being able to build something that I can speak to it and get a result that's, that's something that I've developed in there. Um, from a marketing sense, I love the idea of how you can purchase straight through the application through Amazon. I want Google one day to be able to do that as well. I don't believe we can do that at the moment, or well, not in Australia. And I think it's, it's just going to allow further purchasing straight through, just through the voice uh, as time comes. Do you think um, that essentially all technology is trying to become more human? Uh, in terms of, you know, displaying emotion, being more predictive, voice, sort of more natural interfaces. Yeah. yeah. Is this sort of an inexorable march or, or uh, do you think we're, it's sort of we're, we're in uh, a little bit of a, a different period right now? Uh, I feel like um, a lot of companies these days are trying to go from having a system that looks like it's personalized and, and that it's providing personalized information to actually having a system where you really can't tell the difference between is it a person or is it not a person. And the personalization that's been there in the past has been a bit of that, but these days it's now coming directly from a person or perceived to be a person. And it's, it's definitely trying to get to a stage where you feel like you're having a relationship with someone, but it's, there's not actually anyone there. And then it deviates to someone that you can actually talk to when the time is right. But we're, we're running through something similar where whenever we have inquiries coming in or um, consults coming in that we go through a process where we try to, I guess, nurture them through a person, but it then deviates to someone internally that can actually take the call and, and handle what they're looking for. Luke, is there a book that you'd like to recommend for our viewers? Yeah, absolutely. So uh, one book that I've read, uh, it was a couple of years ago now, but um, it's definitely helped me greatly in project management is uh, Start With Why by Simon Sinek. It, you need to read it. If, you, if you're a web developer especially and not so much a strategist, get into this book because it, it definitely helps evolve your project management skills. Thanks, Luke. Thanks for having me. That was Luke Chaffee, the technical lead at KBB Digital.